Coach. How you doing? Good, thanks. Did I see an improvement? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, at practice, you know, we've, we've always, I, I felt like we've always been sharp. And, you know, going into the game, we just got to keep working on our, our, our skillful blocking, our communication. But our practices, I feel, have always been sharp and well-intended. And the good thing is we're getting a lot of young guys some work. So... Um, all the little bumps and bruises along the way, hopefully will pay dividends because, you know, a lot of young guys are getting some good work and growing. Hey, John, I hate to ask you about something that popped up, but I'm sure you hate that it did. Um, there were 10 players again on the field yep. on a safe in the second, or in the first, in the first quarter as the second punt the Cardinals had. Um, I know you were pretty adamant that it wouldn't happen again. It, it obviously it did. What did you make of why that resurfaced on Monday night? Yeah, well, first of all, you don't have to ever hate to ask those questions because that's your job and it's my job to answer them. So um, shoot all that right at me. I'm good with it. Um, yeah, we, we, we had worked on it and, you know, it just came down to a communication where, um, you know, the call was made and um, it just didn't get done. And then... Um, at the end of the game, it happened again after that long run, you know, it, um, it happened again. And so I, I don't think I promised it wouldn't happen again, although I was pretty damn assured it wasn't going to happen again. So I'll make sure I stay away from promises if that's what I do. And it, it just comes down to communication. It's a, it's a simple substitution that, um, you know, you can put that on me, just continue to um, work on it, maybe yell a little bit louder on the sideline and just spread the word so, you know, when the transitional play happens, you know, we got 20 seconds to, to substitute that, which is plenty of time, and um, I'll take that. I'll take it. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Actually, I want to say I appreciate your, your, your candor and, and the way you approach our questions with your answers and just the way you've gone about this all season, so thank you for that. Yeah, no, it's good. I mean, I, you, you can fire away and uh, – it's, it's good for, for me as a coach to continue to harden my skin. So <laughs> um, fire away. I'm, I'm ready to answer all questions and don't feel bad about the, the bad ones or the hard ones. All right, great. Thank you. Uh, um, Mike McCarthy has said that you're not only the coordinator of, of special teams, you're also the coordinator of, of fundamentals. And we see at the start of practices, you know, you are very, very hands-on when it comes to ball security, when it comes to turnovers. We've seen you swinging boxing gloves at players or having your other assistants do it or the previous couple of weeks we've had players do it. Um, how much is turnovers and takeaways and ball security, how much of that is something that you take on as, as that role? I take on, I think, a huge role in that. And Coach McCarthy has been great kind of letting me spearhead that. I wish I could say, you know, we were more successful at it. Um, but, you know, twice a week. Uh, you know, I, I get to present to the team just some around the league stuff, uh, takeaways from the defensive perspective, ball security from the offensive perspective. You know, every Wednesday and Thursday, we spend eight minutes per day at practice working on it. Um, and it's unfortunate that, you know, our, our, our margin is the way it is because it definitely hasn't been neglected. And, um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're swinging the hell out of the football and um, just getting the guy's mindset to – to keep that thing high and tight, you know, meeting the elbow pit, all kinds of different words we use. And, you know, just training our defensive guys to have that hand-eye coordination for that football that you really see developing around the league. I mean, every week, Marlon Humphreys and Marcus Peters and um, Trey Flowers in Detroit and, you know, um, a, lot of, a lot of different guys that are really good at it. T.J. Watt in Pittsburgh, they're, they're great at getting that football out. And we just got to continue to work at it. And I really evaluated myself this past week. I, you know, I said, Am I, do I need some reverse psychology where we maybe just shouldn't talk about it and see if our fortunes change? And I just don't think that's the right thing to do. So we just went back at it and, and kept working the drills and kept showing the tape of how to hold it, how to take it away. Um, you know, and, and I really got to self-reflect on how to do drills different or show tape different because it's been a huge emphasis for us and clearly it has been a problem on game day and um, 
you know, I'll take responsibility for that because Coach has put me in charge of that. And hopefully um, we can change those fortunes. And um, we show a lot of, you know, I'll, I'll say it, Baltimore Ravens tape, and they, get, they take the ball away four or five times a game. And so, you know, I told their guys, you know, once it starts raining, it's going to start pouring. You know, right now we're in a drought, but hopefully that, that cloud will come and we'll start getting them in multitude. That's, that's my hopes, and we for sure have been working on it. Yeah. What, um, you know, I mentioned earlier, and I don't know how much of it I'm reading too much into, but the past couple of weeks, well, first you, at the start of the season, the coaches were swinging the boxing gloves, and you switched to players, and then it looked like on yesterday's padded practice, coaches were holding gloves. Again, I don't know if I'm making too much of it, but I'm just trying to get a sense of were there any adjustments this week in drills uh, that, you know, and if so, what went into those adjustments in terms of how you guys are practicing ball security and enforcing uh, takeaways? Yeah, good question. We really, every Wednesday, we do eight minutes worth of ball security just for the offensive guys and ball takeaways just for the defensive guys. And then on Thursday, we have a four-station blend where the offense and defensive guys go together and they work on taking it away and, and holding it against each other. So each day is a little bit different emphasis. Every Wednesday and Thursday, we adjust the drills based on what we see on tape that maybe is um, a trend around the league. And so, yeah, every, every day and every week is a little bit different. Um, but I had a boxing glove on yesterday, and I, I ripped off my whole nail on my pointer finger. So I had a huge old you know, bandage on the whole day, and it still hurts like hell. So through the boxing glove, I ripped my damn fingernail off. So I'm swinging at it, man, and so are our players. And I, I really hope it starts to happen on game day because, you know, we've been working at it. And, you know, it's frustrating when you work at it and it doesn't come, but we're doing it in practice. And before we can do it in a game, we've got to do it in practice. And it's starting to show up in practice. So I would hope that um, we'll start to produce in the games. Sean, you mentioned that reverse psychology kind of a joke, I think, and you said that's not where you feel like you should be going right now, but does there get to a point where if these turnovers continue at this rate that you will just say, let's not work on it at all this week or do something drastic? And on that note, I mean, what's the message to Zeke of not overthinking what's going on, but also knowing that defenses are coming after him? Yeah, I, I, don't, I just can't imagine I would ever think that, and I know I've thought, you know, the reverse psychology method, but I just can't imagine, you know, just, if something's not working, just to stop working at it. I don't know if I could ever get myself to go that route. So I was, I was thinking that in my head, but then I snapped back. I'm like, if, if we're not getting the ball out, I think we still need to keep working on getting the ball out, not just not talk about it. So that was kind of just, you know, nighttime self-reflection, maybe some unrealistic thinking, you know, late at night. Um, then you snap back into reality during the day and say, we got to keep working on this. Um, and then the second part of your question, I'm sorry. Uh, what, what, given that you've got this role with fundamentals, even though you're not the offensive coordinator, what do you think the right balance is for Zeke oh. on not thinking his fumbles, but also knowing that defenses are coming after him now? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, and that's where you get into, you know, Zeke's been a part of all those drills and he's been, you know, a, a big load ball carrier for a lot of years before I got here and he's always been really good with it. You know, when you're talking about an individual, maybe the reverse psychology method is, is, you know what, hey, keep that thing tucked away, you know, secondhand cover it in traffic, and just play, man, because you start thinking about it, then, you know, you're, he's not, you're not going to be a runner like his instinctively is, and this isn't my role to, you know, to talk about Zeke as far as the running back part of it, but from the mindset part of it, you know, I mean, he's done everything that we've asked, he's done all the drills we've done, he's looked at all the tape of himself and other ball carriers around the league, um, and that could come into play where it's just like, you know, you know what to do. Keep that thing tight and go play, man. And don't think about it. So, so from that reverse psychology mindset, you know, for an individual, maybe you take that route. And, um, you know, everybody is cl clearly aware of <laughs> our uh, successes and failures. So far, more so missed opportunities than anything. And um, we got a long ways to go, and I, I hope for a lot of improvements. I asked Kellen this a minute ago. Um, in football, do you believe in the yips? Hmm, that's a, that's, that's a good one. Um, wow, do I believe in the yips? 
I believe, I believe in momentum. I believe in momentum a lot. Um, so if, if that's kind of on par with the yips, you know, right now the momentum isn't, isn't in our favor. And so mistakes kind of seem to compound, whether it's realistic or not. And to change momentum, you know, the ball's got to come out for us on defense and the ball's got to stay in our hands on offense and then maybe the momentum changes and all of a sudden we become, you know, takeaway kings. Like I said earlier, you know, talking about when it rains, it pours. It goes both ways. You know, you turn the ball over, it, it, it pours turning the ball over. And, you know, when it rains, taking the ball away, it seems like it rains taking the ball away. So, um, yeah, I don't, think, I don't think it yips maybe, but um, I do believe in momentum. And I do believe in karma too. So hopefully both of those change in our favor. How do you think karma plays into what's going on with him? I think karma, as far you're talking about Ezekiel? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think, you know, what he said after the game, after Coach McCarthy got done, you know, where Zeke, you know, took responsibility for the loss because of two lost fumbles, and he wasn't provoked at all to say anything. He just said it from his heart, and clearly he was emotional. So, you know, everybody taking accountability for their mistakes, like, like I think we all have, um, and then the way he works on it at practice, karma's, karma's going to turn in his favor. He just, it just, it just won't not happen that way. I mean, a guy who, you know, stands in front of the team and puts it on his shoulders and then works at it the way he does and, you know, really doesn't say much about it during the week, I just, you know, that's, that's where I think football karma and football gods, you know, eventually smile on you. Um, so that's, that's what I believe. What happened on the long field goal, the missed field goal? Did he just miss hit that? Uh, what was going on there? Yeah, damn. I mean, that's, you know, it's 58-yarder, but there's a little wind at his back. You know, the roof was open and the wind was going that way. So he had those big, big greedy eyes, and he'd take a heck of a cut at it. He just hit it a little bit high. And so it just came out like a, like a golf shot where it kind of just starts out straight and then just slices out just because he hit it high. Um, and he was so upset because he knows that's right in his wheelhouse. I mean, we could have hit that from 68, you know, and, he, and it would have been in range. Um, and he just felt good, took a big cut at it, and just missed it a little high. There's nothing else to it. Protection, snap hole was good. And um, he, was, he was disappointed because he had greedy eyes that this thing was going right down the pipe and he just missed it. So I, I feel bad for Greg because he, you know, he makes that kick. We'll finish up here with Michael. I was curious about just procedures of, of coaching. Um, I don't know if you've seen the movie The Office, Office Space, but when one of the characters makes a mistake, he's got eight different bosses who tell him that his GPS reports aren't right. And you want to avoid, I'm sure, as a coach, having so many different people tell Zeke Elliott, you know, what he's got to do, what he's got to fix, and go through all that. So when one specific player like him is going through the stretch that he's gone through, do you take a step back and let Skip Pete take care of it and kind of, you know, work with him one-on-one? -on -one? Or how involved are you in that? Do you want to avoid overburdening him with some of the same types of feedback that he might already be getting? Yeah, that's, that's a good one. You talk about office space, the guy, the guy with the stapler? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. That was a, that's a great movie. Um, that poor guy, man. Yeah, talk about just overwhelming bosses, man. Um, but, yeah, with, with Zeke this week, um, I really didn't say anything to him about it. And the reason I didn't is not because it's not my role, but because clearly he's aware. So it's the, yes, yeah, the compounding pressure. Like, you know, I'm sure in his mind he's like, yeah, you know, man, I, I know. <laughs> Damn. You know, everybody's talking to me about this. So... Um, we just, he, he was just a part of the rest of the, the guys on Ball Security Wednesday, just doing the drills like everybody else. And, you know, a real pro, they, they know. A couple weeks ago, we, we talked specifically about a few things, you know, how everybody holds the football, particularly Zeke, because he's a primary ball handler for us. But this was one of those weeks, it's like, he knows, you know, let's just, let's just work on, you know, what he knows he's got to do without really anybody having to say anything. And that is, that is a fine line of coaching is, you know, when do you need to say something? When do you need to just realize that he knows and you just got to work on it? Um, and that's the beauty of every week is different for us as coaches, you know, figuring out what's best for the team, but also what's best for maybe a particular individual with things that they're going through.
So, man, God, there's always something. Jeez, it's awesome. <laughs> but, woo, put in, put in a good day's work. We're good. Thank you. We're done. Thanks.